The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. I've been up with him half the night. He's out to Joe Rodney's place. Oh, I have to get him. Pa needs him. What's he need him for, Mark? It's our cattle. Pa thinks they've got hoof and mouth. Half of them are dead already. Lucas, too. What do you mean, too? Every herd in the range has been hit, Mark. This time of the year, it's been spread all over the place. Nobody noticed it until a day or so ago. You tell Lucas I'll have the dock out soon as I can get him away. But Pa needs him now. Mark, Joe Rodney's got a hundred head to dock streeting. Pete Merritt's got nearly as many, and then there's the rest. You tell your father, he'll just have to wait his turn. Bart. If Lucas needs anything, lard or grease buckets, I've got plenty in the store. Thank you, Miller. Is there anything I can do to help? No. No, I guess there's nothing anybody can do. been something we could have done. At least stayed with them. That wouldn't have helped, Mark. The rest of the cattle needed us more. What's the use? They're all dead now, anyhow. At least pretty soon they will be. Mark? Mark? Breakfast, Mark. I wasn't very hungry. I tell you what, son. I've got to go into town this afternoon. What's say I pick you up after school and we'll stay there and have supper? You always said, Pa, that when we didn't have anything coming in, we had to conserve. We have enough food here. No, I just thought you were getting tired of flapjacks and cornmeal. Oh, no, I like flapjacks. Uh, pa, I was just thinking. Maybe I could quit school, get some sort of a job. I mean, like helping Millie or working in the livery stable. It'd sort of help start us off again. Son, I don't think anybody needs any extra help right now. Besides, your schooling is more important. I don't see why. Half the kids are gone already. What with families moving out, pretty soon there won't be any school. There'll always be books, Mark. You learn from books. Learn enough so maybe someday you or somebody can find a way to prevent what's happened out here. No, you need your learning, Mark. What are we going to do now, Pa? I mean, are we going to be, be dirt farmers? Just sod busters? We're ranchers, son. This is cattle country, good cattle country. We'll try again. You're going to be late, Mark. <laughs> Don't Hello, Lucas. How are you? Fine, thanks. Just stop by for a few things. More cornmeal? Yeah, I guess so. Not a very pretty sight, is it? No, but you can't blame them. 
While their cattle gone, there's very little money left, Lucas. How are you doing? Oh, I think I'll be able to hang on until things get better. That could be a long time, Millie. And talk like that isn't going to help any. I guess not. I'll get these for you. Oh, Lucas! I see you a minute. North Fork's your home, Mikey. You can't just up and go. What good's a law man in an empty town? Well, not everybody's leaving. Things will get better. There'll be new people, and I'm sure others will be back. Pays good money, Lucas, and that's a mighty scarce item in North Fork right now. Look, Mikey, you've been a lawman all your life. Somebody's bound to recognize you up there. It's a job, Lucas. It's a job, Lucas, but what... Oh, I know, I know, I got a job. And to tell you the truth, I don't think much of the idea of moving on. I'm too settled here. Of course, it wouldn't be permanent, but it's good money, and good money's good money right now. Yeah, I know, but Wyoming's a long way, Micah. Yeah, all the way up to the Wind River Mountains. The Cheyenne are broken out of the reservation. They've been stealing cattle and foraging and generally terrorizing the settlers up there. And they've been doing it with guns and supplies consigned to the Indian agents in the area. Now, the government wants somebody to go up there and find out how it's being done. That's a problem, all right. Yeah, the money's good. Enough to start up a new herd, a small one. Could set a man up in business. Why, you old reprobate, you never figured to go up there yourself at all, did you? Well, I uh, didn't lose any sleep over it. Just like you said, uh, I'd no doubt be recognized, but uh, a man who'd never been up there, who wasn't a known lawman... And I couldn't take Mark at a thing like that, Micah. Well, certainly not. You couldn't even tell him you were gone there. You couldn't tell anybody. Well, then it's out of the question. Thanks, anyway. Lucas, you never liked being called a sod buster, did you? I still don't. Well, you better get used to it, because that's what you're going to be. What do you mean, Micah? A cattleman without cattle is just a plain sod buster. Now, if I was you, I'd give this job a little thought. If you change your mind, let me know. I'll set it up. Are you still thinking on leaving? Yeah, Mark, I'm thinking of it. Won't you tell me about it? Well, son, there's nothing to tell. I... Well, I just thought I'd... look somewhere else. Why can't I come with you, Paul? Mark, I... I don't know what I'd be getting into, son. I... Well, besides, who's gonna look after the ranch? That'll be your job. Well, how can I look after the ranch if I'm staying in town with Miss Millie? You know what I mean, son. No, Paul, I don't know what you mean. You sure you've got everything you'll need, Lucas? Yes, thanks, Millie. You'll probably latch on to something real quick. Make a steak and be back in no time at all. Hope so, Micah. You take care, Mark. Mark will be fine, Lucas. Oh? Paul. Please take me with you. Please. He doesn't come back. Mark, that's foolish talk. I don't know. I, I just I have a feeling. <laughs> 
I've been working for you? The answer is no. Oh, I don't want to drink. Honest, I don't. Had enough last night. Well, that's the truth. <laughs> no, Marshal, every time I've been drunk since I can remember, you've been letting me sleep it off in here. Keep me out of trouble, and I always said I'd do something for you in return, didn't I? What are you driving at, Finney? Oh, excuse me, these posters. I know them as well as you do. There, that one. Now, that got my curiosity up the day it come in here. Do you see what it says? He's wanted over to the Oklahoma Territory. Now, he's a mean one, he is. I knowed him the minute I seen that trick rifle sticking out of his saddle. Where? cost you a drink. My pleasure. Bartender, put a glass for the lady. Now, uh, where were we? Nowhere yet. I'll drink to that. Put that drink down, McCain. Pick up that rifle and get out of town. How come you know me? Poster in my office. Lucas McCain, the rifleman. Wanted in Oklahoma. It's a long way from Oklahoma, Marshal. You're wasting your time. I'm not wanted here. You just made a mistake. Turn around! Now, what were you saying? Go on, Marshal. Try. Go on. No, huh? But just in case you're figuring on changing your mind, toss me that gun.
Now, you got an office, haven't you, Marshal? Why don't you just go on down there and tear up that poster? As a matter of fact, I might stop by a little later and help you. You're just full of surprises, aren't you? Yeah. I'll be back. Mr. McCain, got a minute? I'd like to talk to you. Now, I'm Forbes McKee. I run the Indian Trading Post. This is my assistant, Ross. I'm not overly fond of government men. Well, I don't blame you. Man with your reputation? Of course, I'm not a marshal. Just an Indian agent. Congratulations. McCain. Man with your ability, he might grow to like La Mesa. He would take Ross. He was a lot like you. Moving around on the go all the time. Wasted talent, Mr. McCain. Till he came to La Mesa. Settled down. He's a happy man now. Went to work for me. Makes good money. You trying to tell me there's money in running a trading post? <laughs> Who are you trying to kid? I pay well, and I don't care about a man's background. I just thought you might be looking for a job. Might be. Have a drink? Maybe later. If he comes around, what makes you think you can trust him? I don't. Hey, you know something? You keep kowtowing up to the likes of McKee, and any cowboy that comes in here, you're going to end up just like me. Yes, sir, you are just like me. Too far gone to be worth a plug nickel. Nice girl like you. Oh, Finney, <laughs> leave me be. Finney? Yes, Maggie. What? You know something? He called me a lady. You know something else? I like being called a lady. Millie, it's good to see business picking up a little. Good morning, Micah. Yes, now that the worst of the epidemic is over, people are starting to buy again. Yeah, three more families moved back this week. The De Covens, the Moraz, and the Burkettes. Where's Mark? He was gone before I got up this morning. You uh, figure he's gone out the ranch again? Yeah, well, Lucas ought to be back any day now. You know where he is, don't you? Where, Micah? If you won't tell me, at least tell Mark. It would mean so much to him. I can't, Billy. Lucas will tell you all about it when he comes back. He'll tell the boy, too. Well, I gotta get going. I'm around. Micah Torrance gives you quite a high recommendation. He's a good friend, Marshal. Sure glad you got here. None too soon, either. What do you mean? There are two wagon loads of guns coming in here. They're consigned to Forbes McKee. He's supposed to trade them to the Cheyenne or confined to the reservation to use to hunt with. Oh? So it'll be just like all the other times. Those guns will never get here. Somebody will steal them, make it look like the Indians did it. Which they might as well do, because they're going to get the guns anyway. You think it's McKee? Right. The way I figured, he collects three times. 
First, from the government for buying those guns, which he steals before they get here. Secondly, when he sells the guns to the Cheyenne. And third, all those cattle. When does that supply come in? Sometime this week. I don't know the exact date, but McKee would know. That uh, show we put on did what it was supposed to do. McKee offered me a job. Well, keep your eye on him. If he suspects anything, well, let's say he's the kind of man that uh, don't ask you to turn around before he pulls the trigger. Well, I figure that. All right, Joe. Oh, that's all right. It's my steadiest customer, Finney. But you better get out of here. All right, Joe. I tell you, you had me locked out. I was busy. I didn't want to be disturbed. Oh. Marshal, I'm afraid I'm drunk again. All right, I'll put you up for the night, but you got to repay me by cleaning up the office in the morning. Oh, sure. Could I have one to sleep that makes me sleep better? No. Could I have just one? Good night. This house we built by Lucas McCain and his son Mark. August 1881. God bless our home. Oh, Paul. Paul, where are you? 